Hello, I'm Nampanella Malloy and welcome to the Top 40 Movie Soundtracks. So, um, in case if you missed it, I, uh, I talked about uh, part one of uh, this video, which is uh, already out. So here, part two, I will be uh, talking about entries from uh, 30 to 21. And part one was uh, entries from 40 to 31. So let's continue. Number 30, Miami Vice by various artists. So I talked about this movie during an uh, episode of my podcast, Rediscovered Movies, which you could uh, check out. So the album itself, um, I really dug it, especially like uh, re-listening to it uh, for the podcast. I really, yeah, still dug it. Loved, um, it kind of has like a variety, uh, but the tone I would say is, I would say, consistent with the film in terms of being very dark and gritty but also to having fun fun in there but but not be too gloomy if that makes sense so i love yeah they, there is some like mix of rock music uh edm yeah some like slow r b uh some world international music and uh so forth so the songs for me that I would say stand out for me is um, One of These Mornings by Moby and Pally Bell, which is played uh, when Sonny and um, the, uh, the, oh my God, I forgot the, the character, but the female interest where they are on uh, the boat uh, heading to Cuba to grab mojitos. Um, that one's a cute song. And, also to yeah in the air tonight um by nonpoint that that one kind of like has grown on me i i was hesitant with that song at first when i first saw the movie but i guess re-listening to it now like i don't mind it at all uh just a bit and also to it fits with the vision that michael mann was is going for and also to uh, A500 by Klaus uh, Badelt and Mark Batson, if I'm saying those right, because that is the instrumental that's uh, played when uh, Sonny and uh, R Ricardo and Tubbs, I believe, are um, on the, uh, the plane, I believe. So, yeah, um, I know, I think at the time, there was some controversy with the album because certain songs, you know, were not included or there was different versions of the songs. Um, yeah, I get those points, but I would say like, just for me right now, like I don't mind the album too much. Oh, and I forgot to mention um, the Jay-Z in uh, Linkin Park song, Num Encore, this is featured in a movie, but was not on the soundtrack. I would have loved for it to be in the soundtrack, but you know, it's neither here or there because, yeah, that song was widely um, popular at the time. And and I loved, yeah, like when the movie opens, it opens with that song, like just right away. So that was cool. Number 29, Crush Groove by Various Artists. So yeah, like uh, I remember had the VHS of this uh, movie at the time. I remember always like I would uh, always rewatch it like because um, it's a fun movie about chasing your dreams and all that stuff. But also too, I loved uh, the music because it really represented uh, hip hop music at that time from the like the East Coast and um I loved um, the variety of artists they had, such as Curtis Blow, Sheila E, Fat Boys, Run DMC, LL Cool J, and so forth. And um, I would say uh, for me, uh, the songs that I liked were the both from Sheila E, Holly Rock, and um, the Glamorous Life. If if that's if that's the right title, I can't remember. Um, 
but yeah, I enjoyed the all the songs in this movie as well. And kind of disappointment is that this album is not widely accessible on, on streaming service, um, but it is uh, out there on YouTube. But, um, but yeah, otherwise, it's enjoyable. <laughs> Number 28, Slumdog Millionaire by A.R. Rahman. So I haven't seen this movie in quite uh, some time. I remember enjoying the movie uh, at the time because I remember, yeah, like that was played a lot during award season at the time, which was like the big player of that movie, if you guys follow that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I really dug uh, the um, album because in a way it was, was kind of like my introduce my introduction to um, to Indian uh, music, which which now has like different uh, sections of uh, like the industry and, and all that stuff. But uh, it was kind of like my gateway to listen to, I guess you could say international music and all that stuff. And I would say, yeah, like I liked... Um, Osaya, um, the track Ea Raman did with uh, MIA, that that's that's good. And Jaya Ho, of course, that was like the, the big song. I was not, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of the version he did with the Pussycat Dolls, which which is not for the soundtrack, I believe. But um, but yeah, like that's a nice a celebratory uh, song with that one. Of course, I was played during the end uh, credits. And, and yeah, I, I still dig this album uh, many years later. So there's that. Number 27, RRR by M.M. Kiravani. So yeah, this one is, uh, I really like like this one. Uh, the movie, I talked about the movie in movies I love a uh, video you could check out um, but I liked um, how this album is very epic just as the movie itself is very epic in feel in tone and all that stuff and um, I really um, dug that um, I'm even though like I'm not familiar with the language but uh, I kind of dig like the sentiment of uh, of what those songs are trying to say and all that stuff like with dosi that's really all about uh, f um, friendship and all that stuff while not to not to can be which was the big song that won the oscar and all that stuff that was like the big one like all about like celebration and like show and showing the people what they can do and all that stuff if you remember the context of the movie so yeah good album um i would say for me like i i really liked the score of this movie but i just I didn't like how it was separated into multiple um albums i don't know if that's custom uh in india or if it's a, like a licensing thing i'm not sure but i just was not a fan of that just because had the score been combined as one album i probably would have chose that over um the uh, album with the songs itself but again it's neither here or there because you know they're both fantastic and all that stuff number 26 the batman by michael giacchino so yeah michael giacchino i would say for me one of my favorite uh, composers you know i've listened to his stuff in a while ranging from the, the stuff he's on the TV, like with Lost, um, Fringe, and also to his stuff in, in movies like with Cloverfield, uh, Star Trek, Mission Impossible, The Incredibles, and so forth. Um, I chose uh, The Batman, I think maybe partly because of recency bias, even though it came out a few years ago. Uh, but I really dug um, the tone that him and the director Matt Reeves were going for being very dark and gritty, but not being too uh, gloomy. And uh, the themes and the motifs, um, how they're used, really stick uh, with you. Um, obviously, the Batman theme, I really like dug that, and it really like gets you into the mood, like as an audience uh, member, to see 
what action unfolds as uh, as Batman tries to, you know, save the day and all that stuff. So, yeah, that one's exciting. And I can't wait for the sequel whenever that's supposed to come out. Hope And uh, hope I hope all goes well with that one. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Oh, let's see if I can make it easier. Number 25, The Sound of Music by Rogers and Hammerstein. So yeah, Sound of Music is a classic um, musical movie and all that stuff. And I remember, yeah, watching that movie over and over growing up. And when I used to have cable, I remember during Christmas time, they would constantly play this movie, which I enjoyed at first, but then kind of got tired of it because it kept repeating it on TV. So it has been a while since i've last seen the movie but regardless uh love the the songs in this one a lot of uh, show tunes obviously since you know it's a musical and all that stuff but um but yeah they're catchy with the songs um i would say the ones that stand out to me were um the titular song that um julie andrews sings during opening credits um my favorite things obviously when she sings to the children and as they're bonding and also too with uh do re mi when they're out in the field uh with the kids so yeah catchy songs with the sound of music uh, that really stick with you and and i guess somehow it translates uh to be played uh, during the holidays with the songs particularly with my favorite things but uh but yeah um Sound of Music still rocks uh, to this day. I don't want to have to go where you don't follow. Number 24, The Bodyguard by Whitney Houston and various artists. So, yeah, like, it's been a while since I've last uh, seen uh, this movie. But, yeah, it's it's a classic, in my opinion. It might be a bit... Uh, melodramatic here and there but but regardless it's, it's still worthwhile to watch and all that stuff particularly because of the chemistry between Whitney Houston and uh, Kevin Costner but yeah Whitney Houston I would say for me like uh, if I were to pick any large body of work I would say for me this one uh, stands out because I loved how obviously she's good with the the ballad the ballads to showcase her voice but but also too, like when she does the upbeat uh, songs uh, with uh, like Queen of the Night and so forth, yeah, that like it shows, yeah, she has range and all that stuff. So, and obviously, I will always love you is is a stand up and all that stuff. And I didn't know like um, many years ago that that was a cover version because I always thought it was original song, but it turned out it it's a cover. But regardless, I still like it. I still like I will always love you. And, and yeah, and, and I hear that, you know, there are plans to remake this movie, which, you know, hesitant on that, you know, just based off how remakes have, have gone for the past couple of years. But again, The Bodyguard is a classic. Best laid plan, sometimes it's just a one night stay. Number 23, Begin Again by Various Artists. So... This is another movie that I have talked about on my podcast, Rediscovered Movies, which you could check out. Um, but uh, but yeah, I really like this one. Um, very, it, it has like that um, sort of soft pop rock feel to it from the two thousands and in the early twenty uh, tens. Because um, for me, as a, as a music fan, I love I love to l- listen to a variety of uh, of genres, even though I'm more of a pop uh, person, I, I love like my R and B, my rock, hip hop, and so forth, depending on my mood at the day. Um, but yeah, I loved uh, this one. You know, it's it's kind of stripped back, obviously, like and 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 in context of the film, you know, that makes sense. And so, Lost Stars was obviously the the big song. Um, yeah, and it's uh, still, you know, quite uh, significant with, with that song because of the themes and all that stuff. But also, too, uh, Tell Me If You Want to Go Home. Uh, that that one also, too, is, is great as well, too. And I really dug it with Keira Knightley in this movie. She has a fantastic voice, and I believe it's my it was my first time 
you know, sing or sing and, and yeah, she delivers obviously. So, and I don't know, like if, you know, she wants to pursue a career in music, but she can certainly can just based on what I've seen in this movie. Number 22, Elvis by various artists. So yeah, Baz Luhrmann, uh, if you're familiar with his work, he's one of those directors that uh, has a very unique style that is going to be very hit and miss for a lot of uh, people. So I don't mind his style um, myself, but you know, always like when you see a movie of his, you can tell that it's a Baz Luhrmann project. Now, with the music uh, itself, yeah, he, throughout, you know, his filmography, he's done a great job, you know, curating uh, songs for his movies, um, whether um, it's reinterpretations or some original works as well, too. So, um, for for me, um, I, I, it was kind of, I thought it was a bit tricky at first to choose which which album from his filmography I wanted to put here but for me Elvis uh stood out for me um because I like that more as a whole compared uh, to like Moulin Rouge uh, and uh, The Great Gatsby um because I loved yeah like the the use of Elvis music because um it had like a, a mix of the classic uh Elvis songs which were sung either by Austin Butler or uh, Elvis himself, while also to uh, had the uh, collaborations of many um, artists, uh, young and old, to do their own versions of uh, Elvis songs. And ones that stood out to me, uh, The King and I by Eminem and CeeLo Green, um, Vegas by Doja Cat, that, that was, that's a catchy one too. And yeah, like, uh, Loved how this album, where you could, um, you can dance to it with some songs, while others, like you could be moved by it, particularly when with the gospel sounding uh, songs. Um, I'm blanking on the titles, but um, there's one. Uh, I think Yola, that's her name. Uh, jazz. There's also Jasmine Sullivan, um, and but 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 yeah, like I I, I dug this music. So I guess if you're an Elvis fan, you'll you'll enjoy this uh, as well too. And yeah, and shout out to Austin Butler. He did a, a, a great job with this movie because I remember during award season, I was rooting for him uh, to win the Oscar. It, it didn't happen, but, but regardless, he yeah, did a fantastic job with this movie. Number 21, Batman by Prince. So yeah, Prince is the goat. He is the man. Um, <laughs> I remember, yeah, watching the movie itself when I was young. Um, the, I didn't remember my thoughts, but I remember like enjoying that one, and and also like, reflecting on it now. Like for me, this movie stand I would say stands up more than Batman Returns, which was the sequel for this movie. I know many people will probably say Batman begin Batman Returns is better. But for me, I always gravitate towards uh, the 1989 um, movie just because it's it's fun. Um, I guess it's it's very self aware, and uh, and I think mainly too because of Prince, because I am a Prince fan myself. And um, I guess yeah, like if you love Prince, you'll you'll love uh, this album. And I would say the ones that stood out to me in terms of the tracks, uh, Party Man, obviously, which is serves as the joker's uh theme song <laughs> uh like if you remember during that scene when the joker storms he sort of storms into the museum uh to uh talk to vicky vale if you remember that whole sequence scandalous of course that's a nice a sexy uh song and i remember the yeah, the music video he's like um, wearing like the red uh, jumper, doing all those moves while singing the song "Scandalous," which is uh, cute, and also to "Bat Dance." So that's it was a nice like experimental type uh, song with the different uh, songs, and the video is, is is also nice with that one as well too. So yeah, Prince of course 
is, is the man. So that pretty much um, does it for part two of uh, this installment. So up next will be part three, where I will be talking about entries from 20 to 11. So stay tuned for that one. And uh, the albums that I've talked about in this video, I will put a link for them in the description where you can listen to them either on YouTube or YouTube music. Um, my socials are in the description and you could support me on buying me a coffee, all those links in the description. So I want to say thank you so much for tuning in uh, to this video and I hope to catch you in part three.